Good morning, church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. Today we are going to look at one of my favorite passages in the Bible and where it, it correlates very well with what we've been talking about. But I want to give you a, a piece of assurance today. This 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 piece of confidence will allow you to go after God and and maybe you miss it. Maybe you fail. You know, maybe maybe you maybe you quit in ignorance. You know, maybe 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 something's just not maybe you don't succeed. But in the process, this is I, I think being a being a pastor and, and walking this life out and, and counseling so many different people. The thing that I've seen to be the number one, if you had to focus on something when it comes to uh, what principle would you hold near and dear? For me, I would think it would be the aspect of not quitting. Uh, I think that's a great virtue to have. That's a great thing to have in your arsenal is this resolve inside of you to not quit. And we talked to, I put a bonus teaching out called quitting, and I'm going to actually reference this passage uh, when Elijah quit. But I want you to see a principle that happened in God's heart. I want, I want you to see one, the reason why Elijah quit. And I want you to see two, how God responded to Elijah in his failure. Because if you see the reason why he quit and the, and what God did in his failure, it will actually produce confidence in the inside of you to go after God. And even if you miss it, know that God won't forsake you. He there, there is, there is long suffering and mercy and love and grace at play that God will sustain you in your failure because he knows your heart, um, behind it. This, this would tie into when we talked about Jesus, the judge that God judges according to the inward parts, not according to the outward appearance. So, Father, bless these people under the sound of my voice. Let this word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your Son. Father, let it grow on the inside of us. Teach us how to not quit. And God, teach us that when we fail, you are with us always. And God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, what I want to show you first is we... we when I when I teach two truths and a piece of hope, which is one of my favorite sermons, and and that's what I've labeled it. Um, I've taught it many times. I've split it up into many sub teachings, but one of the main principles is a uh, First Kings seventeen. It's Elijah and the ravens. It's knowing that the provision of God is always made available before the need, and the provision of God is where God told you to be. That if God told you to move. And you don't, you'll die where you stand. And then I want you to see that when Elijah comes out, uh, that Elijah goes to the brook, goes to the city, but he again calls down the fire. You see this, this big drama unfold between Elijah and Ahab. When he calls Ahab and says, I'm gonna, it's gonna rain, but it's gonna be according to my word. But they had this whole thing go down where all the prophets of Baal, 450, they go and Elijah says, do all your sacrifices, do all your altars. You call down fire from heaven. Let's see if your God or my God is true. And they sat there and wailed and cried. And Elijah, Elijah goes, why don't you do it louder? <laughs> so they do it louder. And then Elijah took 12 stones according to the tribes of the son of Jacob, on whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord, made a trench above the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed, put the wood in order and cut the bullocks in pieces and laid the wood on the, and said, fill four barrels of water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. So not only am I going to do this, but I want you to put water all over it. So you know there's no way. And he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. Do it a third time. They did it a third time. And the water ran about the altar and filled the trench also with water. So now he's not only about to do a sacrifice on an altar, he's going to call down fire, but his uh, sacrifice is drenched in water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering and the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant. 
and I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, and this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Now, this is in 1 Kings 18. I, I don't know if I reference that. We're in 1 Kings 18 right now. The people saw it. They fell on their face. He said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. And Elijah said unto them, take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up and eat and drink, for this is the sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went to eat and drink, and Elijah went to the top of Mount Carmel and cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And then he goes and he prays for the rain. But what I want you to see is that Elijah calls down fire. Stands valiantly in courage. 450 prophets standing against him. Calls down fire. Offering consumes it. And then he says, don't let any of those prophets escape. And he kills every single one of them. This man has courage standing against the king. I want you to see all this before you see what's coming next. 1 Kings 19. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with all he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Listen. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he had saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. Now listen, the man that stood against the king is now running from a queen with a letter Ahab had 450 prophets of Baal, and Elijah killed them with a sword. He called down fire and stood against a king, but he runs from a queen with a letter. I mean, Jezebel knew where she was at. Why didn't she send the army to try to kill him? Because she couldn't. She knew she couldn't. But Elijah ran. This is... I want you to see Elijah failed. He quit. He ran. So we know that it happened. I want you to know why. Let's 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 read a couple more things, and we're going to get to that. So he went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down on Jupiter tree and requested for himself that he might die, and said, "It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my fathers." Now he wants to die. And he lay and slept under the Jupiter tree. Behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a curse of water at his head. He did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came to a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of the meat for 40 days and 40 nights under Horeb, the mountain of God. And he came thither unto the cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy com that covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and a strong wind rent the mountains, and break it, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so. When Elijah had heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood. And the entering of the cave, and behold, there came a voice unto him, and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria, and Jehu the son of Nisham shall be, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elijah 
the son of Sapet of Abomola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay, and him, sh and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet have I left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. That's a lot of scripture to read, but I want you to see this. That let's, let's first talk about why Elijah ran. And two times when the Lord of the Lord came to him, and then all the, the fire, smoke, earthquake, all that came, and then God spoke to him again. But he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel, have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. When Elijah ran, what he knew, what he knew, remember in Hosea chapter 4, I believe it's verse 6, it said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's only the thing that you know. But Elijah thought that he was the only one left and he ran. Because he thought he was the only one left. That's the reason he gave to God. I'm the only one left. Two times does he say it. I, even I only am left. Without a clear understanding of the plan and the will of God, you could run away in ignorance not knowing God has something already prepared for you. You could not know that God had... The, the, pro, the, the problem with the generation that the Lord returns, the thing that Jesus most emphasized was deception. is the ability to not understand the plan of God and be deceived in the process. Je uh, Jezebel said, I'm going to kill you. Sends him a letter. Why not send an army? Why not just kill him? Why not try to kill him? Because she knew she couldn't. She used a fear tactic to scare him. And it worked. He ran. And he ran because he was ignorant of the truth. Well, what was the truth? The truth is God said, I have 7,000 in Israel that did not bow their knee. There's 7,000. It's not just you. So one of the principles we learn here is that without a clear understanding of God's plan, God's heart, and the entire picture, without understanding this thing front to back, this Bible, without understanding the prophetic scripture of the end times, without understanding what's all happening in the process, you could run in ignorance. You could quit. And God's saying, you don't know what's going on. This is why we have to trust his head is his most fine gold. That's what it says in the Song of Solomon chapter 5. His head is his most fine gold, which means his leadership is divine. Jesus said, I'm the first and the last. My eyes go to and fro. I see all things. He has a plan. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He knows. He sees. There's nothing that's hid before God. Everything is naked and bare before him. And you can trust him. So the first part I want to I want to really look at in this story is the fact that, well, first point first, he quit. He ran. He did fail. This is, this is Elijah's greatest failure. The man that just stood up to a king and slayed 450 prophets of Baal, called down fire from heaven. It was his word that stopped the rain and his word that started it. I mean, the things that he's experienced with God at this point. But because of ignorance, he runs. Because he doesn't know. God, he doesn't know God's got 7,000, but he runs thinking he's the only one. So the first thing I want you to see is he fails. He runs. He quits. The second thing I want you to know is the reason why in which it happens. Well, the reason why we've just said it now a couple of times is ignorance. He didn't know. And that's, a, and that's a big problem, church, in the body of Christ today. The church will say, I don't know. I don't know what the Bible says about that. I don't know what God says about that. I don't know what God's plan is in this. 
that right there would cause you to quit when God's saying, if you'll just keep going, I, I've got 7,000 other people that are going to be with you in this process, but you quit thinking you're the only one. It's a dangerous deception because thinking you're the only one, the, the enemy uses the tactic of feeling like you're alone. Now, yes, you have God, but he'll say you're by yourself. You're alone. You're the only one left. God forsaked you. Let me read you a verse. I said this on our Instagram yesterday. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetedness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, listen, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God's saying, I'm not leaving you. You're not alone. He didn't say, I got 7,000. So what happens? He quits. He fails. He did it because he was ignorant. He didn't know any better. Ignorant just means you're unlearned. He doesn't know what God knows. He didn't even ask God. He just ran. It's dangerous, ain't it? But I want you to see, it's not, I don't want to talk mostly about the failure. I really want to talk about what happened. What was God's response to him in it? Verse 5, and he lay and slept under the Jupiter tree. Behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a curse of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came to him a second time, touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. He arose, did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights under Horeb, the mountain of God. That the journey, 40 days and 40 nights, was sustained by two meals. Sometimes we don't see that. These little details matter so much. When he was under the Jupiter tree, God sent an angel. Take and eat, arise and eat, arise and eat. Two times, he says, arise and eat. And he gives them this food. And this food, it says, he went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights. Under the un, under Horeb, the mountain of God. The mountain of God. That these two meals was a was enough to sustain him for 40 days. Well, why is this important? Because we didn't learn the reason why he ran until later. But God knew. God knew why he ran. God then asked him and then he told him and then God had to correct him and say, you're not the only one. You didn't know what I knew. But God didn't forsake him in failure. Now, when I say what I'm about to say, I'm, I'm going to preface it by making this point. As I was prepping this teaching and I was meditating, when I prep, I really just meditate the teaching and, and pray about it. What I'm about to say, if you took it out and you took it in left field and out of context and you, and you ran in a different direction, you would say that this would allow you to condone sin and failure. And when you quit, that's not what this does. There is a difference between rebellion and ignorance. In the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, hold your place here. Just hold your place in 1 Kings. Go to Song of Solomon. Verse 2, 17. Until the daybreak and the shadows flee away, turn my beloved and be thou like a roe or a young heart upon the mountains of Bethur. You should go watch our daily, te our, our daily teachings on a verse-by-verse -verse. Song of Solomon, chapter 2. You'll see that she didn't quit in rebellion. She wasn't rebelling. She was in fear. It was her ignorance of God's plan. Even though he said, I've overcame. Come with me to the place of overcoming. Here's your budding virtues. But she was so immature in the Lord. There's a difference between immaturity and rebellion. Immaturity is just, a, is just ignorance. It's lack of knowledge. Being unlearned about the plan and purpose and call and and who God is in the process, and and she draws back the same way with Elijah. Elijah is not rebelling. God is not for rebellion. There there is failure that is rebellion. You quit and you turn away from God and you disregard Him completely. There's there that's that's very different than. I quit and I failed, 
but it's I, but it, I failed because I didn't know, and I walked in ignorance. Church, I believe wholeheartedly that's why God has allowed me to be where I am today, because I failed. I quit. You know, uh, this is many years ago now, six years ago now, almost seven years. I quit. I walked away. I forsaked my call. I, I drew back and I backslid for over five for five years. I backslid. And when God restored me, what I learned is I walked away in ignorance. I didn't know First Kings 17. I didn't know Elijah and the Ravens. I didn't know Matthew 25, Parable of the Talents. I didn't know the truths that would have kept me steady. I walked away in ignorance. And I, and I, and I say that with the most tender love sometimes without, without actually, let me say this clearly, without the knowledge of the truth, drawing back is just ignorance. But when you know the truth and you draw back, that's rebellion. That's very different. And walking in rebellion will receive the di the discipline of God. But what I want you to see is that in a place of immaturity, in a place of ignorance, in a place of failure, when Elijah quit, God sustained him. And this is this is where I want to get to. I want to get to this place where I talk about um, not quitting. And one of the aspects of not quitting is the undergirding truth that if if you're going hard after God and you fail, you take the wrong road, you mess up, you do something you're not supposed to. Let's say you, you walk into sin, you go down a different path you weren't supposed to, whatever it may be. When you do it, in ignorance, the same way Paul said that I did this stuff in ignorance. There was mercy and long suffering because I did it in ignorance. I did it in immaturity. That this principle in 1 Kings 19 teaches us that God will sustain you. God's long suffering is not just the patience that he has and the ability to endure the pain and the, the, of the adversity of you walking in your failure and you quitting his purpose. It's not just that. It's that in that time, God wants you to be restored. And he just doesn't leave you where you're at to die. He sustains you to restoration. God provided for Elijah so that he'd end up meeting God in the Mount Horeb, where God would speak to him in a still small voice to tell him the truth. It took Elijah 40 days and 40 nights to travel to a place to finally get quiet, to be able to hear the truth. This is why prayer and fasting is so important. We said it in our discipleship class and we're going to, we're going to do a teaching on fasting soon. That's something we're, we're partaking in this month. This is something I'm doing personally, but what I want you to know about it, I, I want to speak this truth to you today. When God tells you to go somewhere, the provision is waiting on you. That's 1 Kings 17. And when you're walking this life out, if you fail, if you not, not if you rebel, I don't want to talk about rebellion today. Listen, don't rebel. If God tells you to do something, that's where it's at. You don't go there, you won't get it. But if you're walking this life out and you fail, you run, you quit because you didn't know. Listen, there, God, this, this truth right here will allow you to run after God because even if you fail while going after him, God will still sustain you to restoration. He's not leaving you. Man, I hope this is blessing you. It's blessing me. This this truth does not condone or allow sin. This truth is liberating to allow you to walk free and to walk with all your heart and to go after God with everything you have. Because you know that if I failed in the process, God will still he will sustain me to bring me back to the place of victory. There's nothing to worry about. God's hand is always on your life. And we're out of time today. So Father, bless these people. I pray this word becomes wisdom, revelation. God, let it rise inside of us. Teach us how to go after you with all our heart, knowing that you are sustaining us even when we fail. Not to condone failure, not to allow for failure in our life, God but to know that we don't have to fear being left without you. God, we thank you and we love you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Church, have a wonderful day. 
We will see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Have a great day.